very quickly and that I might not be able to go back to the place where my parents came from. Because, you see, my family is from Iran. Like millions of my fellow Americans, my heart broke on November 8th. And like millions of American daughters, I called my mom that night through tears. And I asked her how so many people could vote with their hate and their fear against people like us. Now, my mom had about 28 years of experience with my tendencies towards melodrama. And she told me very calmly not to fear that she and my father had been through much worse in their lives. The Iran of their childhood no longer exists. It fell away in a revolution that took place decades ago. And they're OK. And they came to America so that their children would never have to know that kind of a loss, would never have to know what it is to lose your country. And so as my small act of protest, I asked my mom, book those flights, we're going back. I didn't know then that on January 21st, millions of women would turn out around the world, far dwarfing the scope and scale of my small act of protest. And I didn't know then that on January 27th, just seven days into my trip and seven days into this new administration, the president would sign his travel ban. Now, for those of you looking to escape the day-to-day -day political realities of American re life, I cannot highly recommend Iran enough because it is a country in which Twitter is banned and Facebook is banned and mainstream news sites like the Washington Post and the New York Times are all banned. And my mom well, and I spent that first week staying in these cute little bed and breakfasts that had little by way of internet or television. And so I spent that week in a state of bliss. I was walking the streets of Rom and Kaushan and Esfahan, thinking about what these places were like when my parents and my parents' parents were growing up. And I was sightseeing and reading and eating albeit overcooked vegetables, because it turns out Iranian cuisine is not very vegetarian friendly. But at the end of that week, my mom and I returned back to Tehran to stay with a family friend. And while she didn't have the internet, she did have TV. And so on that Friday night, uh, January 27th, I'm in the living room and the news is on. It's state-sponsored news, but it's news nevertheless. And I can mostly tune it out because it's in Farsi and Farsi is my second language. And I'm reading and suddenly I hear Raiz Jombure Amrika, the president of the United States. And suddenly I remember why I'm here at this particular time in our history. And I look up and I see an image, it's a map, that has seven countries highlighted. And while my geography skills are lacking, I do recognize one of those countries as Iran. And I listen and I learn that people coming from those seven Muslim majority countries would be banned entry into the United States, effective immediately. And at first I thought, this can't be happening. It's too fast. It's too soon. But the thing about Iranian news is it's state-sponsored, and so they play the same clips over and over and over again. And after about three or four times of watching this same clip, the reality of my situation sinks in, and the phone starts ringing, and it's my family from back home, and we're coming up with a plan of what to do in case my mom and I are blocked entry, are detained when we try to re-enter our citizenship set aside, because at this point we have no idea what to expect. There's so much chaos and confusion. And it's getting late, and it's time for bed, but I can't sleep. I was so angry and hurt and ashamed because I thought that we had moved on from this, that we were better than this. I felt duped into this false sense of security because... I'd been here before. I'd felt this kind of rejection before. September 12th, 2001 was the first time I learned that someone could hate me or fear me or misunderstand me without doing me the courtesy of getting to know me. 
I was 13, and my best friend found me in the hall, and she said, look, Gina C. has been telling all the kids at school that your parents had something to do with it. And by it, she meant those two towers coming down just 25 miles from where we lived. And immediately, I was just completely taken aback. This was so ludicrous. I was freaking out just the day before with all of my classmates because my mom worked in New York City, and I had no idea where she was. And there I was being accused of something so heinous and hateful. (laughs) Unfortunately, the rumor was so ridiculous that it died out after a week. But once you have that feeling that you're different, that you're easily mistaken, and that people will jump to conclusions out of fear or ignorance or sheer convenience, you never lose that. And I developed this sort of a sixth sense for what people got wrong about me, the ways that they would talk about me, sometimes right to my face. Like, I remember this kid after high school biology class cornered me, and he said, Miriam, just so you know, the only reason the teacher is giving you such high marks is because she knows that your parents come from a culture that doesn't value women. And I just thought, well, it seems to me like you don't much value women, because there he was trying to undermine my success because it allowed him to believe that he was better than me, that he deserved more than I did. And it came at the expense of who I am, of where my parents come from. And so while I have this microphone, let me set the record straight. My parents come from a country where over 70% of the science and engineering students today are women a country that holds science and engineering excellence to the highest regard. And science, it runs in my blood. My mom is one of the best doctors in the tri-state area, and my dad is a nuclear astrophysicist turned systems architect. My aunt is a software engineer, my uncle is a material scientist, my cousin is a civil engineer, and my grandma was one of the first women to integrate into an all-boys school in France. I could go on and on, but this is just to tell you that these are the strong Iranian men and women who raised me, who lifted me up, and who taught me that the sky was the limit because I was at the intersection of two cultures, Iranian and American. But that night, those two cultures wrestled inside the pit of my stomach until finally I gave up on the dream of sleep and it was morning again. And I will myself out of bed and out the house and down the street to get a cup of coffee at a coffee shop because I desperately need caffeine. But more than that, I am craving for the first time in a long time the internet. I want to feel connected to what's going on back home. And so I sit down and I order an Americano and I open my phone and I connect. And while I can't get social media or the news, I can get text messages and emails, and they are pouring in from my friends and my family and my peers and my professors, and they are telling me how concerned they are, how worried they are. They're giving me phone numbers of lawyers they know that are stationed at JFK. But more than that, They're telling me to please tell my friends and family in Iran that this isn't us, that these aren't the American values that we hold. And in that moment, I felt completely overwhelmed by a feeling that was... We're going to stop it right there. I'm going to have to call it a morning. We've been on for a while now. We've been on almost 40 minutes. It is now... 5.01 5.01 a.m. Friday the 13th, 2017. It is Friday morning. If you're awake, good morning to you. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. You'll be hearing from me again. Hopefully my co-host will be back soon. Her name is Diane. She is feeling a little under the weather today, so she's resting. But we love her, and we hope that she gets better soon. Um... As far as anything else goes, uh, if you haven't tuned in, you can catch me on demand. You can catch me live here at speakerstudio.com. You can catch me live on my Facebook, on Facebook at uh, Brian Hammond96, Facebook.com. 
uh, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, or iTunes. Or you can catch me right here. Or you can download it, listen to it later. Whichever makes you happy, whenever you have time, I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian Hammond, and for all of us here at Speaker Stew and Diane McKimson and my family and friends, I bid you a good day, good night, and we'll talk to you soon.